Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and in this video, we're kicking off a month where we want to talk about LED tape and pixels, and how to use those in your stage design, and, and ultimately, should you use them in your stage design, and, and what kinds. So, that is the topic of today's video. You may have seen on the internet, I'm sure you have if you've been on the internet, if you've looked at uh, different influential churches or churchstagedesignideas.com or you've looked at bands with DIY lighting setups, you've probably seen LED strip tape like this that uh, people then apply in various ways to their stage. You might have it along the edge of your risers, the front edge of the stage, you might have it in some strips behind somebody, uh, you might have it in a logo or a shape like that, you might have it installed in a venue across, you know, the, the top lip of a bar underneath it, um, across a dark area in a ceiling. No matter where you put it, LED products are just darn cool, and the ability to make basically custom lighting fixtures in whatever shape or format you desire is really enticing for a lot of people. Now, LED tape and pixels are generally suited best for people who aren't setting up and tearing down every day, though you can build the stuff for touring use, and that does happen often. There's just a few extra considerations of making sure that as it's handled, it's it's protected. Um, but for the average, you know, DIYer, somebody looking to get started with some LED tape or pixels, we'll talk about both, uh, in their stage designs, then there are a couple things we want to think about to get started. Okay, the first that we're going to talk about today is do I want to use regular dumb LED tape or pixels and what even are the differences between them and should I use them at all? So to answer that, that last question first, um, you know, LED tapes and LED pixels look best in a couple ways on your stage, okay? They look best either when visually you're seeing the LED, meaning that they're behind the band pointing out, they're above the audience pointing down. Um, typically LED tapes and things like this are not super bright if you place them up against something and have them cast light upon them. Uh, they can be, but typically with other stage lights they're not going to pop through. Um, so that's our first consideration is LED tapes and pixels like these. For most products out there, they're really not designed and they're really not best at shining lights onto surfaces like a traditional LED par or a traditional LED, you know, wash washing bar or something like that. Okay, and so you don't want to use LED tape or pixel products to replace that type of stage light. What they are good for is, again, looking at them directly, having them above, beside, behind the stage, uh, so that you can see what they illuminate, or, as many people do, you can put them maybe behind some diffusion, behind some corrugated plastic, or behind any sort of, you know, opaque plastic or object that will catch that light, okay? And then that will make that light, um, you know, glow in a way that you can see it, okay? So that's, that's part number one, is if you've been thinking about LEDs, doing a custom pixel project or something like that, I would shy away from the projects that shine, like, onto surfaces, um, unless they're not on a stage, right? If they're on an area that's darker during your performance, uh, like the house, like, you know, the back wall, like an entryway um, that may be dark if it's nighttime, a bar area, then that can work. But on a stage, uh, these LED tapes and strips, they're just not bright enough, and that's not what they're meant to do, okay? And so then the next question is, once you begin thinking about, okay, like, what do I want to do? Where do I want to feature this? What kind of design do I want to do? The next question is control, okay? Um, any type of LED product, whether it be a tape like this, um, and thanks to Entech for sending me this tape, 
um, a few years ago. And uh, whether they're bullet nodes like this, or maybe this even, a, a LED tube uh, that I bought. Uh, you can have a lot of different form factors. But you've got to decide, okay, do you want pixels or non-pixels for your LED project? Let's talk about the difference. So if you go and you just look for LED tape projects, you look here on YouTube, a lot of the projects you're going to see are non-pixel projects, where if we use this tube as an example, I would plug this tube in, say I, I strip these wires and I plug them into a DMX decoder type box, um, then this whole segment that I wire into the and output of that DMX decoder, that whole segment whoop, from side to side would be one color, right? Red, green, blue, you know, I could mix the color, but ultimately this whole entire tube would be a single color. Now, the upsides is that the DMX decoders can be pretty expensive, especially the ones on Amazon that seem to work pretty okay for most people. Um, they're less expensive. Uh, the other upside is some of the tape products are a hair less expensive, though not massively. Um, but, of course, the downside is you can only light up the whole segment. You can't break up the segment into individual pieces. Now, that con has a pro to it. Because this whole segment then, this whole four foot segment or however long it is, only takes up three DMX channels for a red, a green, and a blue. Okay? Uh, out of that DMX decoder. Whereas, if this is a pixel bar, which this is a pixel strip uh, type unit, it has 60 LEDs on it, and in this particular unit, that means that it is indeed 60 separate pixels. Multiply that times 3, you get 180 DMX channels. Okay, so if you're hurting for channels in your DMX software, um, or your hardware controller, or whatever you're using, if you don't have a lot of channels licensed, then you might not want to do pixels. Now the upsides, of course, as we talk about, is pixels allow you to change every LED, or sometimes with the tape type products, it's often every three LEDs, okay? Uh, with little nodes like this, it's every single LED, um, and so you're able to create video-like playback stuff across your lights. Now I say video-like, because a lot of times when we talk about these different pixels, people get into this and they go, oh, I'll use LED tape or pixel strip or these nodes to make a video wall, right? Just a surface that plays video like an LED video wall. And the truth is you can work real hard. It's never going to look quite as good as an LED video wall and you're probably not going to save a lot of money either. Okay, so that's not really the purpose. However, you can take uh, maybe what's on video screens and then spread that out across your lighting canvas, across your space, so that below, beside, above, in the room, you're playing similar or the same video type effects onto your pixel lights or onto your LED tape that you are on your screens. And then it makes it feel just that much bigger. Okay. So while pixels and LED tapes uh, don't play video, um, you know, or pixel tapes rather, and pixel products, um, you know, in the sense of, you know, representational video where you can really see what's happening. If you get them close enough together and you do stand far enough back, you can technically play some video, but it's just not the point. You know, it's not the purpose of, of this type of light. And so ultimately you work really hard and you get something that's kind of meh. But where I was going there is if you have the channel capabilities or you don't mind investing in a media server type program and they don't have to be expensive, we'll talk about that in uh, two videos, I believe, um, then you can really do a lot of cool stuff. And the last perk of the pixels, which I think is a huge perk, is that when it comes to wiring pixels, they're a lot easier to wire and power, especially longer distances. So with those DMX decoders, you come out of the decoder box, you come into your LED tape, and there's a certain distance that you can run of LED, um, whether it be a tape, whether it be a pixel node, a strip, whatever. There's a certain distance that you can run before 
either the pixels start to flicker or more often um, they turn yellowish. Now, in the case of LED tape, that's where they turn pinkish or, or yellowish. They start to lose power and they start to discolor and it's also probably not the best thing for the lights themselves. In the first type, with a DMX decoder, the dumb uh, lights, the non-pixel lights, then when you get to this point, you need to come back to where it's not discoloring, cut it off, and start a new output from your decoder, which may or may not be feasible because your decoder may not be anywhere nearby, and you might run wire to that same location, get almost as much voltage drop, and not be able to go far the next time, okay? Uh, and so as you're thinking about the size of your stage and you're thinking, okay, maybe I can go 10 feet out of this decoder, then I gotta cut it, I gotta have another decoder. Um, all of a sudden, powering it kind of becomes a nightmare. With pixels, it's the opposite. You come out of the pixel controller into the lights and at any point throughout your lights in the future, you can add power through power injection, as it's called, if you want to. Okay, which allows you to go further from a single output of a pixel controller. And that is why for a lot of people, I recommend going with pixels. Um, ultimately, as we move into the future and as lighting gets more and more complex and our programs and controllers that we use, our software gets better, it's easier and easier to control pixels uh, with different pieces of software or hardware lighting controllers. And cost-wise, there really isn't any more much of a cost benefit to going to an LED tape type product with a decoder uh, as opposed to going full blown pixel. Okay, the cost difference isn't there, it's a little easier to wire up the pixels and the effect that you get is just massively better. You go from, okay, you know, each strip of lights could be a different color to every light can be a different color in the animation and you get that much more impact out of the same setup. So, I think that's where we're going to wrap it here for today. My homework to you is if you're considering this, let me know below. Are you considering doing an LED tape type project or a pixel type project? Then, be sure to subscribe here, and if you're new to stage lighting, check out my free guide over at learnstagelighting.com where I'm going to walk you through the three things you need to know before you begin with your specific type of lighting. Yes, this guide is tailored to band, church, DJ, or theater lighting. Um, there are four different guides. Boom. So they're tailored to your specific lighting. Go grab that at learnstagelighting.com now, and we'll see you here next week where we're going to talk more about LED tape and pixels and how to best use them. We'll see you there. Thanks.